know, ex excited about game week. I think this is a uh, awesome opportunity on a big stage. Uh, a lot of respect for Texas Tech. I think uh, it'll be a really, really tough opener. Uh, one, I think we'll find out a lot about our team right off the bat. They got uh, 10 starters coming back on defense, a defense that led the Big 12 in turnovers. I think they got 29, and they got 10 of those guys coming back, really physical inside with uh, Brooks and Allen, and they got two really, really physical safeties. So I think a uh, lot of uh, experience coming back on defense. Offense, they're always good. They're going to spread the field, get their playmakers in space. They got a really good receiver in Basher. He, I think he's 6'6". He can stretch the field and make plays. So, so, so a huge challenge for us right off the bat, but will be, I think, a good litmus test really early to play in a big game on national TV against a really, really good opponent. So excited about that. Kind of update you all on our injuries. Um, A.J. Brown practiced yesterday. Um, Braylon Sanders and Demarcus Lodge both practiced yesterday. They look good. Um, Kim Webster did not. He needed one more day, but he'll practice on Tuesday. Uh, I have him listed as probable because I do think he'll play, but he'll practice for the first time on Tuesday. And then uh, J.V. and Hamilton practiced, and he was fine. So that, that kind of gives you a little update on our injuries. And after that, I'll open it up to any questions that you have. On the subject of injuries, Coach, how's Sincere David doing? Yeah, Sincere, I think uh, he he is probable. He did not practice, but I think he'll be available to give us some snaps. Um, maybe 20 snaps, we'll, but again, I'll find out a little bit more Tuesday. So I do think he'll be able to give us some snaps. So he probably went from questionable to probable in my mind, but I, I don't think he'll be able to play the whole game just because of conditioning. He hasn't practiced very much. but. But if he had to, I think he could get him there and give us some snaps. Questions? Hey, Matt, I was going to ask you about, yeah, I feel like Talmud is your leader in the offense. If you develop a couple guys in defensive huddle, it gets grab everybody by the throat if you need to. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think Josiah ha has become that on the D-line. I feel really, really comfortable with Zedrick Woods and C.J. Moore, kind of the quarterbacks of the defense, and they're, they're both older guys that have been there. So th those three, Victor Evans as well, has kind of stepped up and emerged as a leader. So I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, though. But I would say Zedrick, C.J., and Josiah. Hey, Matt. Uh, given the struggles that you guys had against the run last year and the makeup of what Texas Tech has returning on offense, do you kind of expect more run from them than the passing they're known for? I do. I think uh, any any team, whether they're known for run or pass, I think they're they're going to try to run the ball early and try to establish the run. And I, th I think any team is going to do that, especially when you try to attack a weakness that we're going to have to prove that we can stop the run early for sure. How's the linebacker situation? shaking out in August you know you you've gone youth you've gone older you how's it ending up I guess? well you know I, I think um, what happens is you, you're looking for that energy and that toughness and guys that'll fly around and hit you and that, that's what uh, Momo and Ruggs have given us and you know I think you'll have uh, you know Willie Hibbler that knows what to do and he and he is improving because of the competition but uh, I've been very, very impressed with those guys flying around and, and bringing that energy. That's what you need from a linebacker is flying around and making a big-time play. And, and both those guys are athletic enough to play in space, which this game is going to be a space game. Uh, and and I, so I think that's important. Coach, uh, looking at uh, Texas Tech's results last year, TCU was one of the very few teams that practically shut down their passing game. Uh, is there anything you can say in, in, to that respect? Uh, they, they uh, TCU in particular, did a good job of subbing out with them, and they played a few more DBs in the game and took some linebackers out of the game. They did a nice job with their little substitution package. Uh, that worked well for them. Matt, I know Texas Tech, is they're bringing in prospects for this game on Saturday. Are you guys planning to do that as well with the Houston area kids? We, we are able to do that. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, but they, we can provide them tickets to the game, but you can't see them or talk to them because it's off campus. But you can provide tickets for, for guys in the area, uh, particularly Houston, especially with being an 11 o'clock kickoff. It'll be harder 
for people to get there from further away, but the, but the Houston area kids, we can. Matt, now that you've been through this for a year and you've been on the sidelines as a head coach, is there anything you particularly or your staff wants to work on, whether it be game management or anything like that? Is there anything you want to improve on? Well, I think you always are looking for ways to improve, and I think just going through it and experience, I think all that stuff helps. But always, year to year, you always look at yourself, what can I do better? And, and not even year to year, but week to week. And so I think you're always looking for ways to improve, absolutely. Coach, is, is Scotty going to be taking the, the main – uh, the main load of the carries, or are we going to be seeing a fairly solid balance between all the running backs? No, yeah, Scott, Scotty will uh, will start the game and, and go, but I think um, you're always having to keep guys fresh. And if he goes in there three or four, then we have other backs that we can put in that will be better fresh than Scotty is tired. So, I, But but Scotty will start the game, and he'll get the majority of the carries, but you, you'll see some other backs you know, throughout the game based on situations and where those guys are best at. Coach Luke, being able to play a big-time opponent in the opening week in an NFL stadium, how huge is that for you guys in this uh, football program? Oh, I think, I think it's big. I think, like you said earlier, you, you find out very, very quickly about your football team, you know, and you, you, know, you don't have any time to, to break in or break in. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's big-time football right off, right off the bat in an NFL stadium on national TV. So just excited to, to go out there and, and really – see where we're at. I think the guys are tired of hitting on each other. They're ready to go out and face an opponent. And I think it'll be a really, really great test to see where we are. Coach, you've, you've hit on Tech's strengths, but what makes the air raid offense so hard to defend? I, I think uh, just putting uh, playmakers in space and making you have to make plays in space, uh, distributing the ball and not just uh, focusing on one area, but making you defend the whole field. I think that's what makes it unique. And, and Cliff has been really good at that for a long time. Matt, uh, it looked like Jacquez Jones had kind of risen the last couple of weeks. So what's allowed him to do that? And I see him now here on the two deep. Yeah, so uh, he's just uh, – he continued to get better and better. Maybe somewhere like around practice six or seven, he kind of hit the freshman wall. And then – but he bounced back. And so I think you're going to see him play some. And, uh, but just his physicality and, and his knowledge, uh, his instincts. He has some natural linebacker instincts, and he shows up around the football. So, so excited about what he's done. It looked like in some passing drills that he was pretty uh, competent in, in covering in space. I mean, did, did you see that, or did I just catch him on a, on a good couple of snaps? <laughs> yeah, no, I, w what he has is he has good football instincts. So I don't think it's just on pass or run. I just think he's a, he's a natural linebacker. He's been doing it for a long time. And uh, as far as playing in high school, it's not like he's moved in from safety or something. He, he understands the, the fits and the run game and the, the drops in the pass game. So I think for a freshman, I've been very impressed with his, his football IQ. What did you see from their quarterbacks on tape, and what's the challenge when you don't know who the starters are going to be? Yeah, I, I think the challenge is they're different. You know, you know, you got the um, you know Carter who started the Texas game, and then you got Jet Duffy who's more of an athlete. So they're totally different, and you have to prepare for both. So anytime you don't know exactly what you're going to get, that makes it a challenge. So, but. Uh, We'll, uh, we, we practice against both, and we play a similar style of offense, so I think our defense has, has seen it. They've seen Jordan pull the ball and, and enough drop back pass where, where we'll be prepared. Coach, it looks like uh, Ben Brown's beat out Jordan Sims for that guard spot. What, what's that battle like between a redshirt freshman and a guy who's been here for a few years? Well, you know, and again, I think uh, Ben is a very, very talented individual, but Jordan is a guy that can help us in a bunch. So you'll see Jordan a lot. I, I kind of see him as a sixth starter because he's going to play some guard. He's going to be able to play some center. And just to have him um, and his experience there will be huge. He'll be a calming effect on Ben um, on the sideline, but also be able to play some, some meaningful snaps. He can play at both guards and center. So having a guy like Jordan is invaluable. Coach, will we see any of Matt Corral, or is he just strictly a backup? Uh, right now, the plan is to, to go with Jordan the whole time. But if there is any opportunity to get Matt in there, you'd like to see him and you know get a chance to get him some experience. Uh, but uh, I, you know, hopefully, right now the plan is to play Jordan the whole time. But if an opportunity presents itself, we'll certainly take advantage of it. 
along those lines, have you y'all made a game plan on how you're going to use this four game for freshman rule? Um, yeah, the, so again, a lot of these freshmen um, that you're seeing that show up on the two deep, it, there, there won't be a question of the four games or not. It'll be, you know, th those guys are going to play. Um, but again, I think uh, the guys that we feel like are ready, we're going to put them in there and use the first four games. And if there's some guys that are developing, we can use the last four. But, but right now, the guys you're seeing show up on the two deep, they're going to play in these first four games, and we'll, we'll kind of see where they go from there. Matt, you talked about their quarterback and dash uh, Vasher out on the edge and everything, but what about their ability to run the football? They've got an experienced offensive line, a pretty good set of running backs. Yeah, no, they do. They do. I think uh, Trey King, number 24, I think he's, he's coming back. He's, he's very, very – he's a one-cut physical runner, likes to get downhill, and they do have most of their offensive line coming back. And, and again, they've seen us on tape struggle to stop the run, so I think you're going to see that early in the game for sure. Matt, we lost both uh, kickers. Why don't you talk about uh, those guys that we hadn't mentioned much in preseason? Yeah, I've been, um, again, cautiously optimistic there, uh, very similar to the running back situation. We're trying to replace somebody. Uh, but, you know, Mac Brown has really, really hit it well. He, he is a very, very athletic guy. He can do a lot of different things. He can run it. He can throw it. And he can really, really kick it. So I think he, he provides us some opportunities in the, for fakes. And then obviously he can really, really hit it. So I've very, been very, very impressed with him. And then Luke Logan, I think, has had a very, very good camp. He's got a strong leg. He just got to go out there and do it in the game. But the fact that he's been you know, in an SEC game and done it gives me a little bit of, uh, I guess, comfort. But uh, he's done a good job this camp. Coach, you mentioned their, their takeaways. And they had 29 this past year. The year before, they had only 11. I know they had some staff change and all. But obviously, they're emphasizing that. And I even noticed in the bowl game that they're holding guys up, trying to punch the ball out, et cetera. Is that something that you warn the team about, or well, how do you prepare for that? Well, you're always preparing for ball security. So that's something that you're working on. But you are aware that they're very, very good. And the improvement they made from 16 to 17, they improved in virtually every category. Uh, so this is a defense that's getting better and returning virtually all of their starters. So it's a very, very formidable defense. And uh, we're going to have a work cut out for us. Have you decided on punt return yet? Um, right now, as of today, again, um, with, with AJ, AJ's injury, he hasn't been back there much. So you're going to see Elijah Moore um, back there to start. And you may see a little bit of Tyler Knight as well for the punt. Jalen Jones will be back there at kickoff return. Yeah. Coach, what's well, one thing that you're hoping to see that is going to make you think that this team can win games this year and it, it, you really think that it's all going to click for them? You know, I, I just want to, I want to see, a, uh, be, see a confident, fast football team. I think if we go out there and we play confident and we play fast, we play attacking football offensively and defensively and keep the other team on their heels where we're not back playing on our heels. I think that's what I'm looking for. This is the first time we've talked to you since Urban's suspension was announced at Ohio State. Just what do you think, or what safeguards do you guys have in place to prevent something like that from happening here? And what do you ultimately think a head coach's responsibility is in that situation? Well, I think, I think you always want to do things the right way, and you always try to learn from every situation. So, but again, we, have a, we, have, we feel really very, very confident in our plan. But I do think when you always have to look at things that you can do to be better. So you try to, you know, take the mistakes that other people make, and then you, you learn from those mistakes. But we feel very confident in what we have in place here.